Good morning, everybody. It is a cold Sunday morning. Beautiful, but chilly. That's why I'm in a hoodie and a blankie. And I have a hot cup of coffee. Sitting out here on the deck, just put the horses out in the pasture, and they're loving it. It is Sunday morning, the day after my third show of the season. <laughs> it is all about the wind. Yes, so it's bad news and good news. So I had debated whether I should go at all because, you know, I had said in my last vlog about this that he's not really confirmed in this test yet, this level one, test three. It's pretty sloppy and, you know, we're getting through it and I'm surprised at the marks I was getting that they were as high as they were because it doesn't really feel like he it, <laughs> really does it that well yet. Um... And obviously I wasn't remembering it, screwing up more and more. So I had debated whether even I, sh I wanted to go. I had canceled my hotel. I decided not to go up the night before. I was just gonna treat it as a day show since it's only an hour 20 from my house. But it did mean more stress because then you know you gotta get up really early. You gotta make sure you get there. Otherwise you're gonna go through all this prep work and then you could not get there in time and miss your test. And what a waste of time that would be. Not to mention gas. Gas prices the way they are. So, where's that one? It's still windy. Well, I managed to wake up. I woke up at 4.30. <laughs> I didn't get up then, but I woke up on my own. I had an alarm set for just before 6, I think. Um, I had to get up early just because even though I had given a bath the day before, I didn't put any blanket on him. I'm not used to wearing one during the summer anyway, and I just didn't want to change his routine. And but he did not roll, thankfully, so he was nice and clean. Anyway, got all ready to go. Jake was going to come with me. But the hardest part was trying to get Jake up early because he does not get up early. So we were rolling by 8 o'clock in the morning. And as far as the weather, I was so happy because it was only going to be 68 degrees up there for a high and that was like god that's perfect you know max won't be hot it was going to be partly cloudy so the sun won't make him too hot and all good right <laughs> for one little thing it was so windy just unbelievably windy but i figured all along we're probably going to be riding again in rings one two or three those are the ones he's ridden in a lot we had already been up there once that was our our uh first show we went to back in May. He knows those rings. There's nothing too scary around them. There's, it's right next to the big warm-up ring. And when I got there, I went to the, you know, you go to the show office to pick up your numbers. And we were in ring four and I, and I asked where that was. And guess what? It's the scary ring. It's the one right next to the cafeteria. And I thought, great, because we hadn't ridden, we didn't even, you know, usually you come up the day before a show and you ride in the ring you're going to ride in, but I figured we'd be in those one of those other three and I didn't, I wouldn't need to. But to make matters worse, not only was there the cafeteria, they had set up on the other side, you have this one strip along the ring where you, where you can warm up just before you go in. They let one horse in while another horse is testing and you can get your horse a little warmed up and then you go in. And right all along that entire thing, they had put a hundred, 200 foot of white tent, tent, no walls, just the top of the tent. And it runs all the way, the whole width. And then there's the f huge ginormous flagpoles that they have there with these big flags, like five flags. <laughs> flags were straight, just flapping. All the chains rattling on the poles, the, the tents were flapping and creaking and making weird noises and when she, when it was my time to go over there and get into the warm up, you know, the area beside the test, he didn't even want to walk in. <laughs> I was like, great, this is gonna be interesting. Because he just was running sideways, looking at the tent, snorting his nostrils flaring and felt like he was gonna bolt on me and so, so all I did was walk him, try to, I walked him past that, and the, the girl had finished in the test before me. I thought, well, I'll, even though I had more time, because some someone had scratched, 
and when I walked in, the girl said, you have time so you can take your time. You don't have to go in before I was supposed to go in 11.38. I had minutes that I should have been able to keep working in. I didn't realize though, so I thought, well, I'm gonna walk around, at least get him away from this and walk him around the judge once, the whole test thing. Well, I didn't realize once you do that, they think you're ready to go. And then she rang the bell on me and I was like, great. I haven't trotted, I haven't cantered, I haven't gotten used to this at all. And now I have to go do my test. <laughs> it was a rodeo, let me tell you. Started okay, but, and I'll, you'll, you'll watch it. And I'll, I'll, he looks sort of okay, but he's so tense and he's pulling me and... And when we, it all, it all kind of went to pot when we started the canter work because the trot work wasn't ready. His trot circles were all tense and weird, and he just, you know, he wasn't really paying attention to me. Uh, and then we go to do our first canter, and it's down at the end, going toward these tents, and he just would not go into the corner. He cut it really sharply to start the first canter loop. And as I'm three quarters of the way through the canter loop, she then rang the bell, and I, I said, and she said, "Oh, I made it. I didn't realize that." She said she made a mistake. She thought I had gone off pattern but because I had cut the corner so sharply and then she realized he was just spooking and she said no you can start over and, on that movement so we go to do it again and he still wouldn't go he, he took the candle lead better but he still wouldn't go into that corner so we cut that kind of sharp he did the loop okay but I'm just basically manhandling him through all this <laughs> um and then I almost forgot the 15 meter circle the first one that's why it was a little not in the right spot and oddly shaped but There's a little rodeo moment, flipping his tail. Those tents you see to the left of the screen, that's just a little version of what was running all along the left side out of sight. It was that kind of white tent, 200 feet of it, flapping like crazy. But he we just would not go into that corner in the canter. So here we're coming around trying to do it again. And then the second cantaloupe was horrible because it's from the other side going toward the tents sort of again and he just he broke he didn't want to go into the trot it, he broke into a trot for a second and it was just horrible really when i say manhandling literally i was manhandling him around And when we did the extended canners, he like ran and to stop the second one, I was pulling him harder than I've ever pulled him to get him to slow down again at the end. <laughs> it's crazy. 
crazy. And then he goes, he does a really nice stop at the end, which is pretty funny. Oh my God, I was like, was I happy to be done with that test? But I went into the show, really, I told Jake, because I was so nervous about it, just because I had been screwing up. I'd been forgetting this test and it was freaking me out. And knowing that he doesn't really know the test that well, that also adds stress anyway. I'm not prepared for this. So I had all those nerves to begin with. So my really, my only two goals, literally, I had said to Jake before I went, I just want to get through this test without forgetting it. And I want to get through all the movements. So. Basically, we did accomplish that. And I learned how to get a horse through a test who was freaking out, and he really was. We just finished our test, which was a bit of a rodeo ride because of the huge flapping tents and winds and scary ring, but it was fun. And the wind was causing problems for everybody that day. The woman who was stalled next to me with her horse, she said, her horse bolted into the ring, <laughs> literally galloped in, you're supposed to be trotting in, galloped into the ring. And, and she said, I had the worst test of my life. And I asked the judge a few times if I could retire and he wouldn't let me. She said, it was my worst test ever. And when I looked at the scores of everybody from, I got a 60.649, which was actually higher than I thought. I thought for sure I'd be in the low fifties because that's how bad it felt. Um, and it actually was, I'm, I'm surprised I got the score that I did. I mean, he did a couple things okay, but like here with all that extra energy, he actually managed a little bit of lengthened trot. <laughs> we had a real learning experience on this test. So, yeah, so far three shows, three interesting rides. What are you doing on the couch? Hey folks, it's another morning, beautiful morning, and I just had the coffee and a peanut butter toast, because <laughs> you needed to know that, right? Yesterday, I spent the day finishing the last bit of uh, flower bed creation that needed work. I had about four feet left of this one section along the wall, I bought a few more plants, and I put them in. Um, I mean, I'll show you a little video of what I put in. And if you people are gardeners and know what you're doing, because I don't, not really. If you can think of perennials that flower a lot, like all summer, that are in the pink, pale pink, I don't like hot pink. I want all, all the flowers to be purples and whites, pale pinks, pale peach, um, something along that line that would do well. It's full sun basically, it's in the morning, it's shaded, and then I don't know exactly what time it starts, but then it's full sun the whole rest of the day. And it's along a stone wall, so obviously it's pretty warm. Um, let me know, okay? Because gardening for me is just trial and error. <laughs> I hate buying these plants, seeing them die. Not that it happens too often, but... Um, So, about to do something a little different with Max. There's interesting clouds today. I'm gonna take Max over to my trainer's bar next door, and the chiropractor is meeting us there. Max is gonna get a chiropractic appointment, and so is one of her horses. Interesting. Hey, Look at that. That's not your stall. Mm. Max has also seen the dentist as he needed his teeth filed. Of course, his teeth just keep growing and growing as they grind them down, but sometimes they get sharp edges on them. 
good thing we don't have to wear that. I actually took Max for a trail ride on this particular day, but then I stopped in at the barn of my trainer on the way back just to watch a little bit and have a chat. And, can we depart? We're back. All right, now you go back to June 18th for a moment. Yes, that's what we have. We have five baby barn swallows that you're looking at there. We've had nice cool weather. They've been doing well. You see they're fairly large. Um, I was keeping an eye on them. Worried, of course. And then I had to leave to go to Dallas for a private show for two days. And off to Dallas I went. Hey everybody, here I am, and hey. look who's here! It's my buddy Mitch, we all know. Drove me for years. Hey, we haven't seen each other in a while, and he's driving me to the airport today. How you doing, Mitch? I'm good. <laughs> Life's good. Everything's good. You miss me, didn't you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Glad you called me. Yeah, and we just talk all the way, so we have to go now so we can continue our conversation. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> I look like this is because the day I got back it was raining and I went down to the barn and Jake had told me while it was gone it had gotten hot the babies had been all jumping out of the nest because it got into the 90s he said one was gone he tried putting one back up and the next moment they were all jumping out again and he left them so I came home expecting to find nothing I found four of them on the floor all doing well but I left them where they were because it was hot up there. Half an hour later, I came back. A crow had taken three of them. There was only one left, so that's why I look like I do right here. <laughs> I had turned the camera on planning to video and I just couldn't think of what to say. <laughs> I couldn't talk. So I just shut it off. It had cooled off, so I put the last remaining baby back up in the nest. And I'm happy to say that it's been days now, and it's doing well. It's up there, the parents are feeding it, so hopefully it'll make it. Alright, let's change the subject. Sorry I haven't been doing the skinny on the fat lately. Um, or for, not just lately, for quite a long time, but the other day I was hungry. I just threw something together quick, and it turned out so tasty that I ate it twice in one day, so... I thought I would make it, and if you like it, you can copy it. It's pretty good. And there's our ingredients. Portobello mushroom, fresh corn, sweet corn, a lemon, a uh, Vidalia onion, and I was using baby arugula, which I ran out of, so now I'm gonna use spinach, which I think I'm probably gonna like the arugula better, but we'll see. Had some rice left from the other day, so rice. the onions for quite a while. Saute them because the longer you saute them, the better they're going to taste. Cut the corn off the cob. Cut the lemon in off. Onions are starting to get there. Mushrooms. Corn. Second in part. 
nice big ball of the butter in there. Add salt. Squirt it, add some pepper. The corn will add some moisture so that you don't have to really add any more oil. Hopefully at this point. Let me help put the lid on it for a while. Keep the lid on it, folks. Looking good. Add the greens. Take the rice. Unsalted rice, so I gotta add a little bit of salt. But yes, I like salt, folks. And, important part, lemon. This is the thing that makes it taste good. A healthy amount of lemon. And then what I like to add is either sunflower seeds, or I really like these. I add a really nice little salty crunch to it. Plus a little more protein. And there you have it. Oh, Rocky's telling me he wants food too. I think I better feed the dog before I dig into this. There you have it. I'm hungry. Are you?